asking for amending Title 20 of the Bremerton Municipal Code regarding cottage housing development, duplex and townhomes, bonus density for affordable housing development, and definition updates. Planning Manager Garrett Jackson is here to present. Good evening, Council. Happy to be here tonight. I uh, just want to start off making sure that everybody sees um, my presentation up on the screen. All right, I'm seeing some nodding heads, so thank you. <clears throat> now, all of our uh, proposed zoning code amendments for this evening are from our infill toolkit and are intended to increase the types of housing uh, that are permitted in the city. So our infill toolkit, uh, there's a, a, the long name for that, is the assessment of Bremerton's affordable housing policies and regulations. Uh, this was originally published in 2018, and it's, uh, it's an analysis of, of the regulations in the city of Bremerton and uh, that may be prohibitive to providing affordable housing. So since this was published in 2018, there's been a number of success stories that the council has adopted. I can go through a few of those now. Uh, we, uh, the citywide density um, for, uh, was raised to six dwelling units per acre. Um, we relaxed regulations on accessory dwelling units. Um, now there's no owner-occupied requirement for accessory dwelling units, and any lot that allows for a single-family home in the city can also have two accessory dwelling units. Uh, changes were made to allow for lot size averaging for subdivisions. So it made those lot sizes a little more variable. Uh, it relaxed standards for manufactured homes. Uh, our minimum lot size in the R10, excuse me, in the R10 zone is 30 feet in width. It used to be that our regulations for manufactured homes required a minimum width that it wouldn't fit on the minimum lot size. So we adjusted manufactured home sizes so that they would be permitted on the minimum lot size in the city. Um, and duplexes and townhomes are already permitted within 500 feet of a commercial district or center uh, in the R10 zone. So currently duplexes and townhomes are permitted in the R10 zone if within 500 feet. Uh, we're asking to uh, extend that out to all of the R10 zone with this proposal. Um, <clears throat> the city of Bremerton produced a joint uh, affordable housing document with Kitsap County that also identifies duplex and townhomes and cottage housing as affordable housing uh, strategies. Um, that was uh, published in March of 2020. And tonight's proposal for this, um, excuse me, uh, tonight's proposal for the uh, affordable housing policies from the infill toolkit deals with two duplexes and townhomes in the low density residential zone, uh, cottage housing in the low density R10 residential zone and medium density residential zone R18, and permitting an affordable housing density bonus uh, citywide. Um, and also with some definition updates. So these updates are intended to address missing middle housing. Uh, the joint planning study from the city of Bremerton and Kitsap County uh, defines missing middle housing as medium density housing like duplexes, triplexes, townhomes, courtyard style apartments, cottage clusters, or accessory dwelling units. Uh, these types of housing developments were largely outlawed in the post-war period in favor of single-family housing units. So as you can see in the uh, adjacent image, um, you know, there are a lot of single-family homes and apartment buildings being constructed in the city of Bremerton, but that missing middle housing segment of duplexes and townhomes isn't something that's being constructed uh, in any great number within our city and that that's a, a portion of the housing stock that's missing uh, from our affordable housing portfolio. Uh, just today, I was in a meeting with uh, Naval Base Kitsap leadership, and one of the Naval Base Kitsap employees was saying, 
how with current prices, blue collar uh, shipyard workers can't afford to live in the city of Bremerton. And part of that affordability problem is the lack of missing middle housing. So first up to take a look at are the uh, revised uses to promote infill of duplexes and townhomes in the LDR zone. So at every level of government, um, we're seeing a push to allow for increased housing types um, in order to promote affordable housing. Um, what we have here offered is a fact sheet from the Biden-Harris administration at the federal level. Um, there are some partisan tones to this document, which the city does not condone. Uh, we are merely offering this uh, document up as a federal support document for um, reducing exclusionary zoning and encouraging the production of two and four unit properties in order to promote affordable housing. So that at the federal level, exclusionary zoning is being identified as um, counterproductive to providing affordable housing and that two to four unit properties are something that we should promote. At the state level in Washington state, uh, for a number of years, uh, Washington state has been looking to potentially take the option out of local jurisdictions hands and mandate that local jurisdictions uh, provide uh, for duplexes and triplexes and, and, and uh, so forth within single family home uh, housing districts. Um, this hasn't become law yet, but we are seeing from the state level that this is a way of providing affordable housing. Uh, at the county level, we've already discussed how the city of Bremerton and Kitsap County have come together in this joint affordability housing, uh, joint affordability for housing project, um, which identifies these missing middle housing types um, and how important they are to affordable housing. And within our own urban growth areas, so urban growth areas are areas outside of city jurisdiction, um, but that are identified to one day be annexed by the city of Bremerton. So not within our jurisdiction, but identified as that we will annex them someday. So they're currently under the jurisdiction of Kitsap County. And within our urban growth areas, these uses are already permitted by Kitsap County. So if you drove through uh, these areas that have the color in the map uh, that you see on the screen, you'll very likely see duplexes, townhomes, and even apartment buildings um, throughout those zones as they are either outright permitted or conditionally permitted in these zones within Kitsap County, within our urban growth area. So, pointing out that these, uh, this has already been adopted not only by our neighbors, but by lands that we will one day annex. And locally, uh, we already have a number of provisions to encourage these types of housing. Um, I'm going to go through the pictures that you see first and then address the code sections that are seen also. Uh, You'll see up on the screen, there's a, a, a few duplexes and those are located on Lafayette Avenue. And those trees in the back that you see are Forest Ridge Park. Um, there is a development of around 10 duplexes that were constructed in the early 2000s. Um, and those would uh, have those areas since have been, uh, the zoning has been changed to prohibit duplexes in that area. So while these were constructed in the early 2000s, they would now be uh, not be permitted in that zone. Uh, you'll see next a picture of an attached single family home on High Avenue. This, I, I believe this was uh, constructed in 2018. And I believe anybody uh, driving by or walking on the sidewalk would see this building and, and believe that it was a duplex. Um, but it actually has a property line running right down the middle 
of this structure. So it's two single family homes that share a common wall. And this is already an allowed development type within the city. And lastly, this is an, uh, a, a, a single family home with two accessory dwelling units built into a single structure on 13th Street uh, by Bremerton High School. Now, I believe that anybody passing by on the street would assume that this is a single family home. Whereas this structure actually contains three independent dwelling units. So I point these examples out to, to show what's already existing in the city, uh, what's already existing in city code to permit these, and also that that line is really blurred on what we prohibit and what we allow. Uh, as we discussed earlier per BMC 2060-060F, uh, duplexes and townhomes are already allowed in the R10 zone if you are within 500 feet of a commercial district or center. Uh, per BMC 2058-060-D7, uh, as part of a residential cluster development, which is a specialty subdivision type, uh, townhomes are an allowed use already in, this, in the R10 zone. Per BMC 2060-020-J2, attached single-family homes are already allowed throughout the R10 zone. And per 2046-010, accessory dwelling units are allowed anywhere in the city um, where a single-family home is allowed to be built. So on any single-family lot, regardless of how large or small that lot is, uh, you can build three dwelling units. Uh, this is a map that was requested by council at the study session. Um, you'll see here in orange all the commercial areas within the city of Bremerton. Those are the commercial zones. So, and the black line represents 500 feet from those zones. And the area in yellow um, is the R10 zone. So there's, this is just an illustrative example that a large portion of the R10 zone already permits duplexes and townhomes um, in the R10 zone. That being said, this is another map that illustrates in orange existing duplexes, triplexes, and apartments within the R10 zone. So that uh, Lafayette example, those, those duplexes on Lafayette that were constructed in the 2000s um, but are no longer allowed in that zone, uh, that's an example of duplexes, triplexes, and apartments that already exist in the R10 zone that are, would now be prohibited, and they are now non-conforming structures. So uh, the main point of this map is to show that the continued prohibition uh, may not make sense as these uses are already prevalent throughout the zone. This is another map showing vacant properties that are large enough to develop four dwelling units or more. Uh, why four dwelling units? Uh, it's because accessory dwelling units are allowed on every lot in the city. And uh, there are development incentives um, that are very attractive for accessory dwelling units. Uh, you could build accessory dwelling units on any lot regardless of the size. So effect, they could have effectively a larger density um, than the proposals that are uh, before you tonight. So you'll see uh, that the areas in green are properties that are large enough to develop four, air, four residences or more. And that these properties are largely absent from um, the interior of the city and are, are for the most part on the periphery of the city. So while we are proposing to end the prohibition 
on duplexes and townhomes, uh, admittedly, it may not have a very large impact um, because these properties are generally on the outside of the city or outskirts, pardon me, of the city. And once again, uh, these are recommendations for affordable housing that are well represented at, uh, uh, throughout our community and the country. Um, in May of 2020, um, the Kitsap Association of Realtors um, put on a Kitsap Housing Summit. And the purpose of it was to discuss affordable housing options in Kitsap County and how do local jurisdictions increase affordable housing. One of the recommendations that came out of that report was to um, allow for duplexes and triplexes on single family parcels. Uh, you'll see in the bar graph here uh, on the screen that from the years of 1981 to 1999, uh, the housing that was produced in Kitsap County was of a much greater unit, uh, excuse me, a much greater number. And that the housing produced from 2000 to 2020 um, was, was far less. And that that is part of the reason that we find ourselves in this affordability crisis was just the sheer number of residential units was not on track to keep up with our growing population. And particularly what was absent is from 81 to 99, there was a much larger um, number of two to four unit dwellings that were created and five plus unit structures that were created. Um, we did receive uh, some support from uh, the Kitsap Association of Realtors, uh, KCAR. Uh, we did re receive a comment this evening that these changes uh, will have a positive impact on the cost of housing. It will make housing units easier to produce and the Kitsap County Association of Realtors is supportive of these measures. So uh, just to review this one section, uh, these strategies are already identified in our affordable housing strategy documents whether that's our infill toolkit or the document we produce jointly with Kitsap County. Uh, we've identified affordable housing solutions at the federal, state, county, and local level that all point to uh, duplexes and townhomes being part of the answer to providing affordable housing. And that currently, um, they are permitted in the city um, with some prohibitions. Uh, these development types are currently found throughout the city already. So while they are prohibited now, they are already prevalent in our jurisdiction. Um, and that there may be a small impact, uh, but it removes existing prohibitions, inhibiting potential affordable housing um, as we move forward. And that at, uh, the recommendation from the KCAR event for the Affordable Housing Summit was in support of duplexes and tri triplexes in the single family uh, zoning district. Uh, next up, I'd like to introduce our planner, Kate Millward, who's going to talk about affordable, excuse me, cottage housing as an affordable housing option. Uh, the last time council saw this before the study session was a grant proposal, uh, which was accepted by uh, council for um, coming up with a cottage housing code. Uh, it was a $40,000 non-matching grant from the Department of Commerce to produce a cottage housing code. Uh, take it away, Kate. Thanks. All right, uh, next slide, please. All right, so cottage housing is a smaller scale neighborhood type of development that um, is similar to traditional neighborhoods in the United States where there's smaller, there's single family houses on green spaces like yards. <clears throat> what it does is just create it on a smaller scale. So typically these are four or more clustered dwellings and they orient toward a shared lawn or green space or open space or shared um, communal property of some kind. And they're pedestrian oriented, not automobile oriented. 
um, and this is to uh, create a safer community. And these ordinances are typically accompanied by a density bonus, but that's not what, what we are going to propose. Um, so the pictures on the right, you can see there's a there's already a development on Snyder that is representative of cottage housing. It's several houses, several dwelling units on a shared lot. Um, they're not always on a shared lot, as we'll see in the next slide, please. On Chico Way, uh, which is in the county, it's also representative of what cottage housing looks like. Here, it's, an, it's a subdivided, but we are proposing to not have these subdivided because that reduces the, um, the cost of the housing and also the process that people have to go through to develop the housing for this. Um, Thank you. Next slide, please. So the definition that we are adding is the co for cottage housing development is that it means a lot containing more than one principal conventional dwelling unit. Units shall not be greater than 1,200 square, 1200 square gross square feet and shall not share any common walls, ceilings, or floors with other principal conventional dwelling units. Again, these, are, these have an orientation that's specific to this development type. So structures shall be oriented to the street or shared open space and limited to clusters of no more than 12 units. And that number particularly comes from research done for adjacent um, uh, municipalities and in the area, it's a, it's a typical number that limits how many houses are there so that community can grow in a healthier way. Uh, the code includes an open space requirement of 400 square feet of open space per dwelling. And it also includes a parking requirement, which is slightly reduced of 1.5 parking spaces per unit. Next slide, please. Uh, this type of housing comes with uh, design standards. So the code proposes that they include a requirement for French porches with a minimum dimension of six foot depth and 10 foot length. And again, this fosters community and orientation towards the lawn and uh, the development of this shared space. In the code, non-conformities are accounted for an existing home not conforming to cottage housing standards may remain on the lot. And the procedure for this would be as follows. In a low density residential R10 zone, it, when there's three units or fewer outright permitted, when it's outright permitted when meeting all criteria of approval. And when it's four units or more, a conditional unit permit, a conditional use permit is required. And then in the medium density residential zone, the R18, it's outright permitted when meeting all criteria of approval. Next slide, please. All right. Thank you, Kate. Our next topic is a bonus density uh, for religious organizations. Um, now this is a mandate from the state. State of Washington per RCW 3670A545 requires that jurisdictions provide a density bonus to religious organizations if uh, it's exclusively for low-income housing um, and that there would be a time restriction for no less than 50 years and that that, um, that housing can't discriminate against any person who qualifies. So that being said, there aren't a lot of criteria uh, within the state RCW, um, and it's really left up to um, local jurisdictions to negotiate as proposals come forward. To, so to avoid that, the city is requesting, or, or is, uh, staff is proposing to have a 50% uh, density bonus um, for qualifying projects, and that the applicant be a religious organization as defined by RCW 2604-007 um, or the Bremerton Housing Authority. So the Bremerton Housing Authority um, is the only nonprofit we are currently uh, recommending be included in this code provision as they have an incredible 
um, track record for creating affordable housing in the city. Uh, we have a letter of support that's shown from the Bremerton Housing Authority on the screen uh, supporting these proposed amendments. Uh, in particular, because the at the moment, the Bremerton Housing Authority isn't able to use all of its 1900 housing choice vouchers uh, to provide affordable housing for those that qualify. Currently, there just isn't enough housing uh, for to use these vouchers and the Bremerton Housing Authority in part supports these amendments in the hope that more housing that will apply to these vouchers would be constructed. Uh, as far as procedure is concerned, uh, this would require a conditional use permit and the criteria of approval would be that they meet all other city standards. So whether that's parking, utilities, or traffic mitigation, or other measures, these housing types would need to meet all other city codes. Um, this does not apply to congregate living facilities. Uh, all units are affordable as defined by RCW 8414.010, and that we would require a notice to title that um, encumbers the property for a period of 50 years and that the, the housing provided on that property is required to be affordable. Um, and that the property would, the development would also be required to consult with Kitsap Transit on any appropriate transit services that would be required of the development. And also that the um, housing be non-discriminatory. Now at the um, study session, there was some uh, feedback provided on what that definition of discrimination should be. And so you will see that the bolded and underlined language uh, was added, and I'll go ahead and read this in its entirety, uh, that these developments would not be able to discriminate. Uh, the affordable housing development does not discriminate against any person who qualifies as a member of a low income household based on race, creed, religion, lack of creed or religion, color, national origin, sex, gender identity, gender expression, veteran or military status, sexual orientation, or mental or physical disability, or otherwise act in violation of the Federal Fair Housing Amendments Act of 1988. So when speaking to our city attorney, she recommended that I point out a definitional change that is already in this ordinance. Um, the RCW 3670A545, which deals with the density bonus, um, defers the definition of religious organizations to a different RCW. So they point to religious organizations being defined in RCW 3601290. Now, the definition of religious organization is buried in five pages of RCW that deals specifically with religious organizations hosting homeless encampments. Uh, so we thought that it would be uh, confusing uh, to point to this specific RCW. The proposed ordinance instead defines religious organization per RCW 2604007. And this is how the city of Tacoma has uh, framed their density bonus. So they point to this alternative definition, which can be seen on the screen here, um, in their density bonus um, ordinance. I'm gonna read both of those out loud uh, so that council can uh, you know, make an informed decision per our city attorney. Uh, these are all, uh, by the way, have been vetted by the Planning Commission. But per uh, the um, homeless encampment, RCW, religious organization means the federally protected practice of a recognized religious assembly, school, or institution that owns or controls real property. The proposed ordinance uh, 
definition, which is also used by the city of Tacoma, defines religious organization as includes, but is not limited to churches, mosques, synagogues, temples, non-denominational ministries, interdenominational and ecumenical organizations, mission organizations, faith-based social agencies, and other entities whose principal purpose is the study, practice, or advancement of religion. And lastly, for our topics, uh, definition modification of maximum density. So I'm going to read the definition of maximum density. Uh, maximum density means the maximum number of dwelling units allowed per the net buildable acreage as stated for each zone. Where not specified in a zone chapter, no maximum density shall apply. So we are proposing to strike the word net and instead have gross buildable acreage. Uh, this is a much more common sense approach um, that the public uh, much more easily understands. Uh, as an example of that on the screen, you'll see a gross acre and an example of a net acre. Um, our examples are used in the R10 zone where 10 dwelling units per acre is the maximum density. So a gross acre is very easy to understand how many dwelling units are allowed on your property. If you have a one acre property, you are allowed to have 10 dwelling units. Gross acre, easy, very straightforward. Uh, net acre is a little harder to understand. So if you have one acre, but portions of that acre are encumbered. Now, whether that is with roads, critical areas, or their buffers, utility easements, uh, if there is an unbuildable area, you have to subtract that from the maximum number of dwelling units permitted on your property. In this example, there is 0.3 acres that are encumbered and 0.7 acres remaining. So whereas you may have one acre, you get seven dwelling units instead of a gross acre, 10 dwelling units. Now, here is another example. So with our proposed housing changes, for duplexes and townhomes and cottage housing. These are potentially much more compact development types. Uh, single family housing requires more area to construct. The example, example number one, you see uh, what uh, a site plan for single family homes. Each one is required to have side yard setbacks that pushes the distance of the dwelling units apart from one another. This takes up more area. Each, each unit has a independent driveway. Uh, that also pre, uh, demands more area to construct. With these proposed zoning code amendments, you could build a more compact living situation in less area. Um, but you couldn't necessarily do that under our current definition, which requires net buildable acres. So in this example, if you are on a half acre and, uh, and a third of that, excuse me, and a portion of that is encumbered with say a wetland or wetland buffer and a utility easement, if it were a half acre uh, of gross, you could potentially have five dwelling units, but on a net acreage um, system, even though there may be room for those units, they would be prohibited from being constructed. It should be noted too that we are the only jurisdiction in Kitsap County that bases their maximum density off of net acreage. Uh, public notice. So we did have uh, a pretty robust public notice um, for these zoning code amendments that included three separate planning commission meetings. Uh, it started with a planning commission meeting in April of 2022. Uh, and then in May of 2022, 
I met with the Kitsap Housing and Homeless Coalition, um, specifically because they have a number of agencies that provide housing throughout Kitsap County. And this was the best way to get in front of as many organizations as possible to explain these upcoming zoning code amendments. Uh, this includes both um, organizations like Housing Kitsap and the Bremerton um, Housing Authority and also uh, religious organizations like the Catholic Housing Services or Ohana Housing Ministries. Uh, we spoke with the uh, Kitsap Building Association on a meet in a meeting in July and explained that uh, these proposed zoning code amendments and found support there. Um, there was a planning commission meeting in June, um, and that was a workshop, and that was followed up by a public hearing in July. Uh, city E News was sent out on Facebook, Twitter, and other electronic medium from the city uh, on September second. A mailer to religious organizations was sent on September 2nd, uh, and that was followed up on with an email. And a mailer to every property in the R10 and R18 zone was uh, mailed out September 14th, 15th, and 16th. It was a mailer of nearly 7,000 uh, individual notices, and that took quite a bit of processing time. Uh, Housing Kitsap uh, and Homelessness Coalition was again visited uh, today to let them know that the, um, all these housing organizations to let them know that the hearing was tonight and to follow up on from the initial meeting in May. Uh, this is what the notice to the religious organizations looked like that was sent out in the mailer. Here is the uh, tri-fold uh, mailer that was sent out to every uh, member of the R10 and R18 zones. Uh, it should be noted that there was an error that the meeting tonight started at 5 p.m. So my apologies to any member of the public in the audience that had to wait uh, for the meeting to start. And once again, um, the uh, Kids Up Housing and Homeless Co Homelessness Coalition. These proposed zoning code amendments uh, were unanimously recommended to the city council, uh, where they recommended that the council hold an open record public hearing, consider testimony, and approve the proposed amendments. Uh, we have a recommended a motion, excuse me, a recommended motion that is also in your packets. Thank you.